Hey fifth graders, it's time for chapter 12 of Lawn Boy. Chapter 12 is called Team Management in Times of Uncertainty. The next day started out normal, or as normal as anything had been this summer. The rain had stopped and the grass dried. I rode my little mower over to Arnold's to check the notebooks to see where the jobs were. By now, the whole thing pretty much took care of itself. Everybody knew where to go and what to do. Well, I sighed, another day. Arnold nodded. It's a good crew. They know what to do. It's the best kind of business. Everybody is happy. Everybody makes money. <clears throat> and Alans get good care. Speaking of knowing what to do, did you talk to your parents last night? I tried, Arnold. I really did. But then Joey showed up and the opportunity was gone. Joey showed up? What do you mean? So I told him about Joey following me home and how difficult it became to talk to my parents about all the money things. I just couldn't see how to break it to them by explaining that I own a heavyweight prize fighter. So I figured I would maybe wait until tonight or this afternoon. It's Monday and they both get off work today at noon. Arnold nodded. All right then, but for sure today, I'm really getting uncomfortable about keeping secrets from them. And I want your parents to set up a proper account for you. Today, for sure. What are you going to go do now? The Beck lawn, the Beckwith lawn. I might as well take my mower over there, keep my hand in. I worked for two solid hours and only had half of the lawn done before I needed to refuel. I'd started to put gas in the mower when I remembered my cell phone. Arnold had bought a bunch of phones and given one to each of the crews and to me so that we could keep in touch throughout the day. It bothered me that I had the thing in a belt holster while messing with gas, after I'd seen something on television about how cell phones might spark and blow things up. So I took it out of the belt holster and was just setting it on the ground when it went off. I had it set on vibrate so I could feel it because with that old mower, there was no way I could hear it. The vibration scared me so much I dropped it. I grabbed it. The call was from Arnold. Hi, what's up? Uh, it might be best for you to head home right now. His voice sounded clipped and unnatural. What? Home. It might be best for you to head home right now. You mean your place or my home? Yes, right. Head for home now. Uh, and then nothing. I looked around, half expecting to see something that would explain what I'd just heard. Nothing, of course. I went over Arnold's world words again, trying to remember. I dialed his number. It rang and rang. This is Arnold. Please leave a message. I started to leave one and then decided not to. Something was definitely wrong. He had just said, head for home. I looked at my watch. Nobody would be there for an hour. Why head home? Why not go to his house? And why had he cut me off so abruptly? <gasps> Rock. It must have something to do with him. But Joey Powell had pretty much taken care of that. Maybe not. Maybe Rock had come back and followed some of the men to Arnold's house and figured out that Arnold kind of ran the show. And then they came this morning, and what? I had to go see, but carefully. I parked the mower and ran the four long blocks to Arnold's. I stopped across the street in the back of the Jameson's hedge and studied Arnold's house. His Toyota was there as usual. Things seemed normal. Nothing was moving on the porch or in any of the windows that I could see. I watched for what seemed like an hour but it was probably only 15 minutes or so. I tried to slow my breathing down from the run over and I clenched my hands into fists to stop the shaking. I finally decided to walk up to the house and check it out and had started to creep out of the hedge when I saw it. Behind the curtain on the living room window, a man's head appeared. Just for a second, the curtain shifted and I saw him. I moved back behind the hedge. Rock, either him or his identical twin. Rock was there, probably with some of his men, and they must have Arnold. So, now what? They had Arnold and they wanted what? They wanted money? More money than before? For sure, but what else? They wanted me? Wanted me to get the money? With a jolt, I realized there was nothing I could do. Pascal turned his cell phone off during the day so he could sleep, and even if I could get into some of the sites and get the men, they might not be able to help. I could call the police. I had a cell. Three numbers, 911, but I didn't. Would anyone believe me? 
A 12-year-old kid calls the police and said he's running a huge business and somebody has taken over the house of the stockbroker? No problem, we'll be right over. We just have to pick up the Tooth Fairy and Superman and we'll get right on it. My heart sank even further when it hit me that I had no way to get in touch with Joey either, who would have been my best ally. All the paperwork was about him. All the paperwork about him was still in Arnold's house. I didn't know his address or phone number or even where the fight was going to be on Saturday. Everything was in the house where Rock was, either alone with Arnold or with more of his men. I needed help. Now, I needed somebody smart who could think outside the box and help me figure out what to do with Rock, or excuse me, about Rock and Arnold. Somebody with a good brain who would truly want to help me. I needed my parents. The plot thickens. See you guys next time.